Hi there, would you like to watch my video and sign my petition? Wait, this isn't a post of two video? Bite my ass. Instead, we're going to talk about the first one, the one that came out in 1997. The first Postal game is actually really disturbing. To be brief, it's a mature and serious take on an individual who's losing their mind. Yes, there is more to it, but this is the intro! I got to ease you in. I can't follow you into the meat grinder right off the bat. That would be rude and offensive. What's really fascinating is that a lot of fans of the Postal series know it for its dark comedy. Yet, when they visit the first game, they are absolutely in awe and shock when they discover how different and how dark it is. Even though I personally experienced the first Postal game before playing Postal 2, I will admit it. Knowing how different it is, it's still an unnerving experience. It feels like a whole different game made by a whole different dev team. Postal 1 is a horror game where you are the monster. I love the game. I personally think it's a masterpiece. It makes you feel all sorts of emotions, but let's be upfront what the game is. You play as someone whose mission is to kill people. You mass slaughter them, but there is more to it than just that. In this video, I want to explore the first Postal game. Try to make sense of a game which, to be honest, is confusing as fuuuuck, meaning SPOILERS! Even though I will try my best to explain it, ultimately this is an opinion piece. It's going to be my take and my thoughts. That's actually something that's beautiful about the game. You have to be the one to form your own interpretation and your own opinion on what the game means. So, is it really a spoiler? Oh, but Marceline, Lord of the Femboys, it costs money to buy Postal. Surprise! It's free. Go download it, give it a go, experience the game for yourself. That's an order. In addition, I shall be talking about the other versions slash expansions of Postal, which are Special Delivery, Super Postal, and the Christmas Special. Plus, the Redux version. I won't be mentioning Postal 2 or the other games because they don't really connect to the first one. Okay, I know one of your fiends will be like, OBJECTION! Okay, fine. I will mention the little ways the first game lives in the sequels, but there's too many, so do forgive me for not including every single one. In Postal 2, there's a theory that the Postal Dude you play as is the son of the Postal Dude from Postal 1. How? Well, on Wednesday, you have an errand to piss on your father's grave. And that grave looks like the grave from the Redux ending. And that's it. There isn't much to go on apart from the grave. So take it with a grain of salt. But hey, it's interesting to think about. Another aspect of Postal 2 that has one lurking inside it is when playing the game, you can hear some ambient sounds. The same ones from Postal 1. Here, have a listen. Honestly, this is so cool. This was a feature of the first game. So next time you play Postal 2, listen out for them. Plus, the Asylum soundtrack from 2 has a Postal 1 vibe to it.
Postal 1 and 2 share some voice lines, for example, Only, only my weapon, weapon understands, understands me. me. The menu screen and sound effects in Postal 2 have a Postal 1 vibe to it. There is a theory that Postal 2 takes place inside Postal Dudes 1's head. He's still in the mental asylum. It would explain the nonsensical town. On the Thursday paper in Postal 2, it references the army looking for a spree killer, which is a nod to Postal 1 with how later levels the army gets involved. Moving to Postal 4, in the cutscene for Wednesday you can hear the Postal 1 sound when the shadowy S character appears. Hmm? Hello there. That's it. I'm not going to talk about the sequels anymore. There might be more in Postal 3, but I'm not touching it. It doesn't even support running with scissors. Even running with scissors encourage you not to buy the game. Respect. We need more devs like this. If you want more context for why Postal 3 is awful, I recommend this video by Shivy. Postal 3 is a game that will give you a disease. And I wish I was joking. Oh, I forgot about the movie. Hmm. I don't know. One second. It's dirt cheap on Steam. For a video game movie, it's not bad. It's definitely an experience, laughing out loud. No references to Postal 1. Well, okay, there's this one scene where you can hear some type of disjointed ambient music, kinda. Maybe that's a stretch, because it kind of looks like a loading screen from Postal 1. Well, a basic draft, maybe, but I don't care, it's better than free. There are probably more out there, but you tell me, you filthy dogs. I promise one more thing, and then we can get to the body bag of the video. So let's be serious for a second. There are people out there who consider the first Postal a mass shooter simulator that promotes shooting to young people. The game was blacklisted and was banned in over 10 countries. There was a massive controversy over it. People really wanted this game to be gone. Outrage and cries over Postal. If you are one of those people, you are wrong, you are a this fool, and you clearly haven't played it. Oh yeah, and you're ugly too. Yes, the first Postal is dark, twisted, and very uncomfortable. But I would even argue it's trying its best not to be a power fantasy at all. It's not promoting mass shootings. I would argue it's quite sad and depressing. It's a piece of art, and it should be studied. Yes, sometimes art can be uncomfortable. And that's okay. If you desire not to play it, not to experience it, that's fine. My issue rises when people who haven't even touched the game are crying and demanding others not to play it. That's what I get offended about. Before we can leave the intro, I must give a warning. If the intro so far hasn't alerted you that this video about Postal is going to get dark, well, it's going to get dark. Postal is a game that centers around a man going on a killing spree. If this is a topic that makes you feel very uncomfortable, please skip this video. As always, all my videos on my channel are for adults only. If you are not an adult, please do not watch this video. Thank you. With that said, time to go postal on this video. Wait for it. Feels like I'm stuck in a dream, turning to a nightmare. It's not a film, I'm over love. So, there isn't a definitive story for Postal. Due to how ambiguous the game is, you can't give a clear cut answer. There is so much going on in that game. Where do we even start? From a gameplay narrative perspective, as Postal Dude, you kill hostiles, which are the police, and later on, the army. Once you've killed a certain percentage of hostiles, you hold F1 and you move on to the next location. You know this is a game from 1997 simply because you gotta hold F1 to go to the next level. <laughs> Once you've completed all the locations, that's it, job done. Of course, there are other factors in play, but let's just stick to the gameplay. With how I describe the gameplay, you may think Postal is just a mass shooter simulator. However, even with just the gameplay, something doesn't feel right. In some locations, you can hear ambient sounds. Remember, there is no music played during the gameplay segments. 
why does Postal Dude hear these sounds? You can spare the non-hostiles. The people who are running for their lives. Innocent civilians. You can choose to only kill the hostiles because they're trigger-happy pigs. Isn't that odd? For a game that Ugly Morons team is a pure mass shooter simulator, Postal Dude can spare innocent civilians. He kind of has morals. Huh. All of this implies that something isn't quite right with Postal Dude. I'll be straight up with you, fiends. Gameplay narrative for Postal is kind of lacking. In my opinion, I think that's by design. Oh yeah, when you do complete a level, you see the end result of your actions. You see the deaths you have caused. It's not empowering. It's quite depressing and really uncomfortable. This was also done in Hotline Miami. There's not much in terms of gameplay narrative to talk about, but it's important to mention it anyway. Now, let's look into the standard entries in the loading screens when the player transitions into the next location. Don't you worry, there's going to be a whole section that focuses on the loading screen art and the soundtrack and how they connect to the entries. There's much to talk about, so I'm trying to space it out. Why is this game so deep? Anywho, each entry is dated. The first entry date is the 10th, 17th, 1997. And the last entry date is the 10th, 23rd, 1997. Meaning that the game events happened in six days. Little details are important. The best way to describe the entries is well, they're demonic, filled with bloodlust, insanity, and they're just disturbing. The very first entry talks about how the earth is hungry. It's aching for cleansing. Another one mentions how the blessed are the meek, which means weak by the way. Make easier targets, tempting the player to kill innocent people who are unarmed. There's one about how the smell of the dead and the dying is a victory, and calling Bob Bluffs a paradise. They're hella uncomfortable. Oh yeah, I need to mention the side commentary in some of these entries, and make his breath, it really does feel like a madman's mind. Total insanity. For example, the train. Oh, aboard! The construction site. Deconstruction! The ghetto. Bad neighborhood coming up! Or Central Park. Peanuts, anyone? Like, is this supposed to be dark humor? Is Postal Dude making light of the situation? Like, one part of the entry is like, I need to make them sleep. Not the bedtime sleep, but the dead type. Then, Peanuts, anyone? What is this? Yes, yes, being serial, these little moments could be considered moments of madness. So yeah, you know, there is reasons behind them. I just thought, you know, it, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so with these entries, it's pretty clear what's happening, right? These are Postal Dude's entries, these are his thoughts, and he's a psychopath who takes enjoyment with killing others, right? That is false! Wrong! That's 100% a lie! No, I'm being silly. Well, you could look at it like that, but that's one of many interpretations, which we'll get to when we reach to this section of that video, because again, spacing out stuff, you know, it's, it's a big video. Plus, these entries, are they really Postal Dude's thoughts? That's one set of entries, but there is another one, which are described as diary slash war journal entries. Let's look at those. The diary slash war journals are alternative set of entries. I use the word alternative because the diary slash war journal entries can't be seen in the game itself. They're actually a secret found in the game's manual. Plus, on the back of the postal special delivery box cover, there is additional war journal entry for the Ismart. Esmart? Easymart? Easymart? Ugh, whatever. To sidetrack, the sad reality of it all is that nowadays everything is going digital, meaning less and less people are buying physical. Buying physical stuff, like collector's edition, is now a niche market. This doesn't just affect video games, but films, shows, anime, so on. It makes sense, it's the prime way to consume them, but bots covers and manuals are now a fading art. For example, I have both the Silent Hill collection, the good one, and the noir anime DVD set. They have booklets and manuals, they give more information about the characters, 
interviews with the creators, concept art, behind the scenes stuff and more, these add to the story and help to enhance your experience. Those times are gone, well, they're fading away and I think that's quite sad, quite depressing really. Something so cool that Running With Scissors did for the remake of Postal, Postal Redux, was to include the war journals as an easter egg in the campaign itself. If you play it on Hard or Nightmare, instead of the standard entries, you get the war journal ones. They didn't have to add them, but I think that it's so cool and clever a way of including them in. It's nice that Running With Scissors took the time to do something like this. Nowadays, most devs simply don't care. They only give the bare minimum. Wow, I went on about bots covers and how physical stuff is a lost art instead of just explaining the war journals. I regret, I regret nothing. nothing. What makes the daily slash war journals- Okay, fuck, I'm calling them war journals from now on. I'm not annoying the fact that some of them are called diary. First, it was just a diary entry. But then when Postal Dude believes it's a war, he changes it. Alright, I get it. Alright, I'm not ignoring that fact. I get it. I get it. So, the war journals are significant because of how they contrast with the standard entries. For comparison, let's look at home. The standard entry talks about cleansing and the earth being hungry, but the war journal Postal Dude seems like he's stressed out. He thinks moving was a tragic mistake. He calls people sick. Not the evil type, but the illness type. Hearing gunshots. And being told through the phone to get out of his home. His home! And wearing a protective vest and holding a gun at all times. This is a man who's freaking out. And he's afraid. This isn't some guy who wants to go on a shooting spree and kill everyone because the earth is hungry. He's scared. You can't help but feel sad for Postal Dude. The war journals imply that some type of warfare is infecting the people, making them mad and sick. He's the only one immune to it, and out of mercy, has to end their lives. It's very depressing. Postal Dude also shows empathy. The train war journal, he considers the idea he might be infected and he needs to move forward to warn others. Postal Dude sees himself as a hero. The chosen one whose mission is to save the day. This makes us feel sympathy for Postal Dude. It kind of makes the people who call this game a pure mass shooting simulator and nothing more really, really, really dumb. It must be said that even these war journals sometimes can be a little off. There are little signs here and there that suggest Postal Dude isn't well in the head. The Parade of Disaster war journal. Postal Dude is like, I may be the only unaffected person left, and this town needs to burn to save humanity. And he's hoping that the infection hasn't spread across the proud country of the USA. Then, is that music? Even some of the war journals share similarities with the standard entries. The construction site one both use the word DECONSTRUCTION, and the ghetto one, they both mention how it's a bad neighbourhood. Might get mud! And Mr. Postal Dude, I think there's more pressing concerns in your life than being mud. Maker's breath. There is a little detail in the war journals that makes me feel sorry for Postal Dude. Like, I feel sad for him and it's really depressing. This is only my take on it, but Postal Dude tries to get help from a friend, then ends up killing them out of mercy, which then becomes a catalyst for his crusade to kill the infected. Or, you know, save the population of the proud country of the US of A. Let me explain. In the war journals, he always refers to people he's trying to save in a general term. He never addresses them by name or individually. Apart from one person, the sheriff. In the truck stop war journal, he mentions that he is trying to seek help by finding them. In my opinion, this means he must have had some type of relationship with the sheriff. I personally believe they were friends. It seemed like Postal Dude really wanted to find them, but he was too late. The following war journal, The Outskirts, Postal Dude calls the sheriff an animal. The sheriff has been infected, and it needs to be said that the sheriff is part of the police, and the police are the hostiles meaning Postal Dude had to kill them to progress to the next level. 
poster dude had to cheer his only friend. And it drives him even further into this idea of saving people by killing the infected. This is only my take, but I don't know. I feel awful for him. Imagine people were becoming infected, and you're thinking that you need to find help fast. You gotta make sure your friend is okay, your only friend. The only person you can trust, but deep down you know they might not make it, and you find them, but they're infected to the point it makes you sick and disgusted. They're an animal now. A sick animal, who's infected, you mercy kill to save them. That would cause a traumatic breakdown. It would mess you up. You would be hurting deeply. I feel bad for Postal Dude. No one should put down their friend. That little detail tells you so much in my opinion. Overall, the war journals humanise Postal Dude. You sympathise with him. Maybe he's a misunderstood saviour. But now it raises the question. Which entry should we believe? The bloodthirsty ones or the war journals? Seems to me Postal Dude isn't a reliable narrator. What does it all mean? We shall talk about it when we get into the interpretation section. I really want to talk about it now, but it will only make this video messy like a body bag. I promise we will get there. Soon. And you know I'm not lying just like I uh, made this video, so you know. I'm gonna keep that promise! <laughs> How about the ending? Maybe that could help us explain what's going on. The ending is split into two parts. The first part is a cutscene using gameplay. Then it's followed by the second part, which is still our images with an ending narration. Now I'm going to show you the whole ending, then talk about what it represents. I already gave a warning disclaimer about Postal being dark at the intro, but I really really feel like I have to give you things another heads up. The ending is really upsetting. It's powerful and it's impactful, but really, really uncomfortable. Please brace yourselves.
<laughs> okay, so yeah, it's quite a bit to take in. It's very shocking, extremely shocking. So let's start with the elementary school, shall we? Firstly, the event doesn't happen in the world of Postal. This is a dream state, or a hallucination, that's happening. It's all in Postal Dude's mind. We 100% know this because the kids are pretty much invincible, and no matter how much Postal Dude tries, he can't kill them. After several attempts, Postal Dude starts breaking down. There are many ways you can look at the scene. Just to be brief, if you're looking at it from the demonic entry's point of view, Postal Dude's weapons are useless. He can't finish his killing spree, and this leads to Postal Dude breaking down. Alternatively, if you look at it from the War Journal's point of view, this scene is very humanizing going through location after location, trying his best to save the population from the infection, and... Oh no. The children are also infected. And he just can't do it. He can't kill them to save everyone. And he starts to break down. He's failed to save the world. He was too late. It's very disturbing. Yet, it's also depressing. Side note, just to give some additional context for the elementary school scene, Running with Scissors took the extra effort to make sure that the kids were invincible and invulnerable, so pretty much god status. So even if you try to hack or mod the game and try to kill the children, it's impossible. In my opinion, it shows you that Running with Scissors never intended to make their game edgy. This ending scene was meant to be an unthinkable moment. This moment proves that you can't label Poster Dude as a one-dimensional character who has bloodlust. The whole point is we will never know! That's both horrifying and so depressing. The second part of the ending is the end result of the game. Postal Dude is now in a mental asylum, and we get a narration. I love it so much because it gives you answers, but at the same time, it really doesn't. It really messes you up. For example, the first line talks about population pressure, and stresses of modern life results in violent behaviour. Okay, does that apply to Postal Dude though? I would argue no. He lives in a decent house, not a lot of population there, and it looks like, well, no pun intended, paradise. Maybe this is partly the reason? We just don't know. Also, I love the line about how Postal Dude's atrocities disgust us. He may consider himself a hero, because in a cruel, twisted way, he could really be a hero. So like, I also love the pause that happens during the narration. It's there so you can just feel up the demonic and the satanic atmosphere of the asylum. Oh yeah, and I love the slam term, going postal. I, I don't know why, it just sounds so slick. But yeah, 
In the end, Postal Dude is mad, and no matter the cause, we will have all the time to study him. Wink wink, which is what I'm doing right now. Ah! Meta. Plus, I have to mention the irony of Postal Dude ending up in a mental asylum. The War Journal talks about an infection germ type warfare. Asylum means shelter, or safe place. In the end, Postal Dude is safe. Or the population is safe from him. The irony, irony, is that you know the asylum doesn't look safe at all. This imagery of the asylum, it's pretty fucked up. But wait, there's more! Even the narration said during the ending, can you trust it? It's done by Rick Hunter, the voice of Postal Dude. Da da da. Is it really someone from the mental asylum narrating, or is it just Postal Dude making it all up? We will never know. Hell yeah, this game is so layered, complex, confusing, wild, crazy. Ah! And finally, the end credits. There is not much to talk about, but I adore it a lot because no matter what any of us thinks, no matter what really happened, or what went wrong, no matter if we find out the truth, or why Postal Dude did what he did, in the end, people died. That is for certain. And that's really depressing. But I will say something that I don't like about the credit art. Well, it's just a small nitpick. It's that there's a baby's corpse in the pile of bodies. It takes away from the elementary school scene. The whole point of that moment was that Postal Dude couldn't take a child's life, but somehow ends up taking a baby's life? I don't know, maybe it's there for shock value, but the scene, the elementary school scene, was pretty shocking on its own. I, I don't know. I don't know why Running With Scissors did that. Uh, I don't know. Small nitpicture though. I forgot to mention the copyright statement in the credits. The nerve that Running With Scissors has. <laughs> the maker save them. And lastly, hearing Postal Dude laughing at the end credits. It's just so uncomfortable. What does it mean? What does it mean? There is very little we know of the Postal Dude, and that's intentional. We're not meant to relate to him at all, but who knows, with the little information we do have, maybe it will help us understand the events of the game. Just a little better. We know he has a dog, because there's a dog house in his property. Side note, I think that's a cute detail, because every other Postal game and movie, Postal Dude is with his dog Champ. He's always had a dog since the first game. It's a nice detail people tend to miss. It's implied he was going to lose his house due to the moving van seen outside. Or maybe he was moving. He did say moving to paradise was a mistake. Postal Dude has good grammar, handwriting and spelling. For someone going mad, yeah, it's pretty good. He does have some morals, like not killing innocent civilians. The original appearance of Postal Dude also tells us a lot about his character. Before I show you that, let me ask you, what do you think of Postal Dude? You think sunglasses, badass, sexy voice, witty lines, hell the funny dude. Well, this is the original appearance, and he looks upset, disturbed, afraid, and paranoid. He's hugging that AK for his dear life, like it's his only means to protect himself. You really feel a little sorry for Postal Dude when you see him like this. Last but not least, the voice you hear isn't actually Postal Dude's voice, it's actually a demon? What? We will cover that in more detail in the interpretation section. The voice actor, Rick Hunter, has stated that he was voicing a demon, and in the game files, the voice lines are labelled as demon. Speaking of voice work, I want to give massive credit to Rick Hunter. He's such an amazing and talented voice actor. He can make any edgy line sound cool and good. It's one of those cases where the voice actor makes the character. Yes, Postal Dude has been voiced by other voice actors, but Rick Hunter will always be my postal dude. The original 1997 postal game has two expansions. In 1998, Special Delivery. Of course, got a reference to Postal Service. Love it. 
and there was Super Postal, which was targeted towards the Japanese market. Running with scissors are weeaboos, it's official. Thankfully the Steam version has everything packaged in, which is hella nice. It's a free game that includes everything. Not a lot of devs do that. Ahem. Go and play it right now if you haven't and if you decide to stay and watch this video. Play the game! To be brutally honest, it doesn't really add a whole much to the original story. The date changes and Pulse to escape the mental asylum maybe? There's more demonic and bloodlust entries. The original ones in my opinion were more impactful, but for an expansion it's great. I can appreciate when a small indie game gets expansions. It also fits the game. It feels like Postal. Also, there was a Christmas special patch that Running With Scissors gave out on their website back in 1997 as a holiday gift. That's pretty cool, and it has unique voice lines. My personal favourite one is... BURN, burn FAT MAN, man burn. BURN! A fun fat feature that is out there, the original box cover and disc of Super Postal was really really rare and had their valuable since it was only sold limitedly in Japan. Okay you dogs, we're going to talk about the meat of Postal 1. It's not the gameplay, it's the loading screen art and soundtrack which acts as an intermission between levels. I absolutely adore both. They play a key role in making the experience horrifying. A key factor why they're so horrifying is because we can't explain it. It's the horror of the unknown. We don't know what they mean. We can describe what we see and what we hear, but we don't know definitively. There's no canon answer. You can't explain it. And that's the point. One of the greatest types of horror is the one where the mind does all the staring. Your imagination. Why is it the greatest type of horror? There's no limit on the mind. For me, the loading screens in Postal falls under the uncomfortable category. The art you see crawls under your skin. I want to look away, but somehow, it's drawing me in. And of course, the ambient soundtrack. It's just, oh my god, it's amazing. I'm very weird, but I found the ambient soundtrack to be relaxing. But it's definitely not for everyone. I don't blame people who don't want to listen to it for long and just move on to the next level. It's not an easy soundtrack to embrace. Some people think the soundtrack is terrifying. It is, though. But I love it. A lot. Sometimes when I feel sad, I lie down in bed listening to it. Especially one of them. It feels relaxing to me. I enjoy it. This stuff is way more terrifying than modern horror games. I kinda hate modern horror games. It's all about the spectacle. It's great for the one moment, but then it gets boring and dull fast. Not to mention the cheap jump scares. Ugh. Which, by the way, Postal 1 doesn't have. It lets your mind do the scaring. Oh my god, don't get me started on the soundtracks. I have bad memory, but a good soundtrack will stick with me. So many horror games soundtrack sound generic and forgettable. I'm looking at you, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Urgh. Maybe I do have a hard on for the older horror games. I will admit, I am a worthless, depressed nobody. Hell, I'm even a miserable prick. Point? But I will gladly rate Postal as an S tier horror game, and it only uses simple art, simple edits, simple effects, and an ambient soundtrack. Running with scissors, as small as they were, were definitely creative, and I think that's beautiful. I would rather embrace Postal 1's atmosphere than touch those cringy, cartoony Resident Evil remakes. What? Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes are good horror games? Horror? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, wussies. The original ones are much better, by the way. Plus, I adore Resident Evil 5 and Zero. I don't know why, they're underrated in my opinion, and uh, oh, um, sorry, I'm sidetracking now. My point is that combining the art, the entries, the war journals, and the soundtrack, they all make Postal a horrifying experience. We're going to look at all of them, including the extra ones from Special Delivery and Super Postal, and listening to the soundtrack as well. Plus, for the hell of it, we're going to look at both entries and the war journals that accompany the loading screen. 
like I said before, there is no definitive answer to what they mean, so I'm only going to share my thoughts on them. But please, if you have your own opinions, I would love to hear them. After this, I swear, we shall look at the interpretations and theories. Hold on to your wieners, okay? This is how we're going to do it, sissies. I will show you themes each loading screen, embrace the sounds for each one, then share my thoughts. Of course, since there are the standard entries and the war journals, it gives a new context to the loading screen art and the soundtrack. So... there's a lot to cover. Again, please go out and fully experience it for yourself, it's the best part of the game. If this is your first time listening to it then, it's not the complete experience, and you owe yourself to do so. And remember, it's free, alright? Let's go! Hold on a second. I will be stating that Postal Dude is the one forming both the entries and the war journals. I understand the demon thing, I'll explain it once we get to the interpretation in the fairy section. For reals now. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, it's the menu screen, but in my opinion, the menu screen is already oozing of information that tells us a lot about the game. Firstly, almost everything on it has a blur effect, from the scrolls on the ground, postal dude, and the background itself. In my opinion, this was intentional, since the game itself is ambiguous. Nothing is clear. Who is postal dude? Why are there so many scrolls on the ground? Where is this exactly? Why is this happening? This hammers in the fact that we will truly never know. We will never truly see a clear picture. It's up to the player to study it and form their own take. The blur effect works excellently. The mouth being there is also interesting. We're only shown the mouth and not the rest of the face. Why is the mouth opened like that? You could see it as a demonic roar of the urge to go on a bloodlust rampage, but in my opinion, it looks like the mouth is expressing some type of agony. It's screaming in pain. The sound playing during the menu screen is really filthy. You can hear a roar, a beating sound, it's rough, it has that edge to it. The intro screen soundtrack is the very first thing you hear when you open the game. To me, it's meant to wake you up for an experience filled with insanity. I love it. Also, don't laugh about the cropped mouth picture. It's 1997. Give running with scissors a break. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, but I kind of like that it's not 100% professional looking. It adds a charm to it. This one is quite depressing. Home is meant to be a shelter, a place of comfort. Visually, it looks damaged. There is blood, bullets, wherever the fuck those are may be in the corner, and the mouth from the menu screen has cropped its way back in again. Haha, <laughs> don't laugh. The sound being heard is like a roar, with sounds of birds in the distance. The reason I call this depressing is because Postal Dude doesn't find comfort anymore in his own home. To me, the roaring sounds are Postal Dude screaming in pain. The entry for home is a lust for blood, cleansing, and the start of the killing spree. You could see it as a demon awakened and ready to kill. But the war journal, Postal Dude hates the move to paradise, which is his new home. He's very anxious. He's afraid. 
and he has to wear a cavalry arm vest and a sidearm at all times. To me, this loading screen art represents Posudu being in pain and being very scared. Well, that doesn't look like a trot stop, does it? But regardless, this is very disturbing imagery. It's the result of Postal Dude's actions. People are getting killed by him. In my opinion, the way that the dead bodies are drawn really adds to the disturbing factor. It's not cartoonish. It doesn't look ridiculous. It legit looks like something in our real world. Running with Scissors is going with a serious, mature route and it helps make this uncomfortable to look at. The sound you hear is also very unsettling. Can you hear sirens in the background? Is that a radio being played? Is this the first person view of Postal Dude? Is this what he sees and hears? The entry talks about the meek being blessed and being easy targets. Are those we see the meek? The War Journal states that Postal Dude was invaded by lunatics and is trying to find help from the Sheriff, afraid that only God can help him. Maybe the bodies we see are the infected. Was Postal Dude acting in self-defense? In my opinion, this represents the aftermath of Postal Dude's killing spree, regardless of how we see it or what we think we know. In the end, only dead bodies remain. Now this one is one of my personal favourites. Firstly, your eyes are focused on the centre, the light that's visible past the trees. It's all blurry. In my opinion, this is Postal Dude's perspective from a first person viewpoint. His mind is decaying. Maybe after being shot at, he's oozing blood and can't see straight. He can't fully tell what he sees. What really makes this powerful is that you probably haven't noticed the body on the floor. Can you see it? I will admit that I didn't see it when I first played it. I don't know why, when I see something that's hiding in plain sight, it makes me shiver in fear. It still has that layer of maturity to it. It really, really looks like a real life dead body. It's uncomfortable to look at. The sound we hear, it's disjointed, messy. 
Is it speech, maybe? Is this a demon speaking to Postal Dude? The entry is all like, ah, the smell of death and dying. Smells like victory. The demon is cheering on for Postal Dude. I don't know. The War Journal, Postal Dude is describing the people like animals. The Sheriff too, which I remind you I personally think is his only friend. The Air Force Base may be his only hope. In my opinion, I see Postal Dude as losing his mind and isn't seeing things straight. It's all becoming a blur. Which, you know, nice reflection to the whole message of the game and tone. It's all a blur, we don't know what it's all about. <laughs> Admittedly, this does look similar to the truck stop one, but in my opinion, it still holds up. Again, it's an image of more people getting slaughtered by Postal Dude. It's uncomfortable, it's upsetting, and it looks real. The sound fits in with the aftermath of Postal Dude going on a killing spree. There was a parade going on, and now it's just... ambient sounds. The entry is all like, what a glorious symphony of slaughter. And Samty sits tomb boners. <laughs> the the death parade. The war journal is more of Postal Dude being very afraid. He feels like he is the only uninfected person. He thinks an epon strike is needed to ensure that the country is safe. He can't let the infection spread. And then of course the Oh yeah, is that music? His mind is detained.
Another one I hella love. It's very simple. It's teeth. Mostly that's like regular human teeth, but it's disgusting and vile looking. Then there are two that look different. Yep, the fan looking one, and then the one that looks decaying next to it. In my opinion, the art really fits in with my own interpretation of what's happening. I won't be mentioning it here, but let's just say within Postal Dude's mind, there is a demon among him. I don't know, those teeth seems a bit sus. Uh, back on track. The sound heard is like a scream to me. Not Postal Dude's himself, but a victim maybe. The entry is mockingly doing a sales promotion about how death is free, at now. It's a cruel, twisted version of a sales pitch. The war journal states that it's a war. Postal Dude uses the term sobering for what happened at the parade. Then he has to trust the bridge to get to the safety of the mines. What an interesting use of the word sobering. It means thoughtful. This moment could be Postal Dude's understanding that the so-called maniacs are sick, gone mad from the infection. To me, it feels like Postal Dude is showing humanity. He was calling them animals and lunatics at first, but now he believes that they're being infected and they can't help it. It's another aftermath shot, but this time you can see Postal Dude lurking in the shadows while there are dead corpses on the floor. I won't lie, Postal Dude that's kind of slick in this shot. In my opinion, it shows his determination. He's on a mission, or whether it's a bloody one or a rescue one. Postal Dude's going to see it through to the very end. The sound being played reminds me of a radio and since it's in the mines, it's not getting much reception. It's slightly off. It really goes well with the art. So the entry is using fly flies and insects as a metaphor. The web we've woven. It's creative, I'll give him that. The war journal, Postal Dude is amazed that he's made it this far. And that he needs to get to the junkyard. I also like that self-awareness that's in there. Postal Dude is saying that he has the advantage in the narrow mines. Gameplay wise, you do have the advantage when going for the mines because of the narrow path. This one is really abstract. In my opinion, you can see some type of metal, maybe it's a bunch of pipes, I don't know, it's really fuzzy. Fiends, if you see it differently, do share. There's a dark shadow that kind of looks like a head, that's a body, I don't know. The ambient sounds adds to the unknown fuzzy factor of the image. I'm puzzled and frightened at the same time. The entry is just casual demonic stuff. 
I'm to wear their body parts and dance, baby, dance. Lovely. The war journal for me is just more depression. Postal dude is successfully getting to each location, but now he's fully committed to his cause. He mentions he needs to do this as effectively and remorsefully as possible. At first, when you read that, you feel like, whoa, he really is a monster. But really, it's depressing. Postal Dude believes that he can save the country. In order to do so, he has to be merciless. He believes he can't hold back. If one infected person escapes, that's it. His proud country of the US of A is doomed. Only he can stop the evil. He's putting the weight of saving his country on his shoulders. He cannot fail. That's what he believes he has to do. If he fails, then it's his fault. Postal Dude believes he's a hero. A hero that has to go on a killing spree. A very frightening image of a demon. It also appears to be human-like. The soundtrack to me is like a demon talking, trying to communicate. The entry, as you guessed, is more bloodlust talk. I feel like they're getting more and more disturbing as you progress through the game. <laughs> the war journal, Postal Dude is hoping others are immune to the germ warfare. He can't be too hopeful, but he can't despair either. It's pretty sad. Postal Dude really doesn't want to do this. He's hoping to find others and try and figure out what to do. But unfortunately, Postal Dude believes killing the infected is the only answer. Just to add my take on the image, I personally think this is what Postal Dude sees. He sees humans turn into infected animal-ish creatures. It does look humanoid, but the teeth looks demonic. It would explain why Postal Dude is freaking out by what he sees, and why he feels like killing them is the only way to save them. This one is very interesting. In my opinion, it's an alternative art to the intro one. You can see a face, but it's all disjointed and blurry. There's writing as well. In my opinion, this is Postal Dude, and he is no longer what he once was. He's a changed man. But the question is, how is he changed? We can't tell. It's a mess. You can see some humanity but it's all deformed. The soundtrack is like those sound alerts that are played informing people a train has arrived. But of course, it's fuzzy, filthy, messy. The entry talks about the next stop being Armageddon, the end of the world. With a stitch? Slitch? I don't know how to say that. Which is Greek mythology, a location of the underworld. And Hades, the god of the dead. Yep, those who die end up there, I guess. Maybe. I, I think so. The War Journal, Postal Dude is drenched in blood. Mostly his and others. He could be infected and considers using the train to warn everyone. I hella like this a lot because even now, Postal Dude is still thinking about saving others. He's showing compassion. It's not clearly told, but to me, the fact that he mentions he might be infected tells me that if he becomes infected, he's done for, but at the very least, he can warn others. He's not just thinking about himself.
by far, out of all the stuff I've seen in the Postal series, this art is slick as fuck. It might be even the most slickest thing in the Postal series. No joke. Sweet maker, this looks dope! Okay, okay. In this we can see Postal Dude being surrounded by demonic, shadowy figures. There's also some type of blood pattern on the wall. And the music, Maker, is slick, metal, guitar, solo, mm. You can tell Running With Scissors wanted this to be cool. So cool. And it is. Okay, okay, back on track. This art piece heavily implies that demonic forces are empowering, controlling, using Postal Dude. Plus, you can't see Postal Dude's face at all, which suggests that the demons have taken over him. The entry makes a joke about birds at the farm. Ostriches. Why the fuck is that ostriches? Can't fly, but will fly south. Ha 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 ha. Demonic comedy right there, baby. The War Journal also mentions ostriches. Postal dude is like, good lord, am I infected? Mad like the others? Then he needs to be more efficient. Describing the job as dirty. Yes, another joke about ostriches that can't fly. Ha ha ha. As silly as having ostriches in a farm, by the way, Running of Scissors does this again by having cats, dogs, and elephants in Postal 2, I think it does add more layer to Postal Dude losing his mind. It's not every day you come across an ostrich farm. Future Marma here, in editing, I found an interview with CEO of Running of Scissors, Vince Desi. He was talking about Postal 1, and the ostrich farm is real, even the Air Force Base. They actually filmed real life areas of Southern Arizona. Oh, and the original team also made Sesame Street and Disney games before Postal 1, laughing my ass off. They were motivated to make Postal 1 because making the other games was so boring. So like, I don't know if Running With Scissors basing the level's locations on real life places is really cool, or if that just makes it even more disturbing. Oh yeah, the CEO of Running With Scissors, Vince Desi, liked my Postal Dude cosplay and follows me on Twitter. I mean, cool, I guess? <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. Let's just say there is a reason why the official Running With Scissors Twitter account isn't following him. If you want to find out why, by all means, check out his Twitter account. Scary spooky skeleton sending shivers down your spine. Being serial, it looks like death. Yeah, skeletons look silly, but it feels mature here. The fact that you can see others piling on each other makes you a little nervous. The sound you hear, to me, is like a ringing bell. Like those bells you hear informing the construction site, it's break time. As we know, it's not going to be break time. The entry references blood splinters. By the way, that's blood found under the fingernails. Gross. It's drawn to the point that even the Bloodlust talk is aware that Postal Dude is bleeding. It feels like paradise. Of course, the deconstruction pun, ha <laughs> ha! The War Journal also references Postal Dude bleeding, but instead he feels like shit. And the blood is making him dizzy. He feels like a helpless child. He doesn't feel joy. He's not happy. Nevertheless, on with his crusade. The construction site needs to go, meaning deconstruction, haha. <laughs> Pun out of the way though, this is a very humanizing journal. You keep feeling sorry for Postal Dude. He feels helpless, and reminds himself that he needs to end this, so hopefully he and others won't have to go through this germ warfare anymore. What I like about the art is that it represents the narrow perspective that Postal Dude has. 
In my opinion, regardless of the entries or the war journals, Postal Dude never thinks of any alternatives. He is fixated on killing. The only narrow path he sees. This fits with the sound being heard, since it almost stays the same pitch and tone throughout. The best way to describe this is like a dark alleyway. It's one path, and your point of view is really limited. Now, you gotta love the fact that Postal Dude is a little self-aware, and has time to mention how bad the neighbourhood is. I don't know why, but this always sticks out to me. All this demonic shit with the entries, yet he has time to mention that the ghetto is a bad neighbourhood? Same can be said about the war journal. Yes, I know, this is a sign of mental decay, but come on, it's like, I might get mud. I will repeat myself, Mr. Postal Dude. Trust me, you shouldn't worry about getting mud. Trust me, you have bigger problems. Future Mama in editing here. Headphone users, this next one you might want to lower the volume. I originally intended not to have this little warning, because I wanted you fiends to embrace this one, fully. But I understand if I don't give a warning, I become an ass, because it is a jump scare. And I personally don't like jump scares, well, I do like some, but most of them are cheap, and I wouldn't want to give you fiends a cheap one, because that's not cool. Personally, I'd rather you embrace this one without lowering the volume, but it is going to be loud. If that's not your thing, please lower the volume. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, get a load of this. Whoa, this is my personal favourite loading screen. I said favourite, alright? The best one and the important one are coming up. I guess those are based on my opinion too, but sharp, morons. Anywho, this is pure, unfiltered horror. Why are video game companies or anyone that makes stuff like this afraid to do something like this when it comes to horror? Wussies, we need more sounds like this. And yes, this is relaxing for me. I love it. The art is really good. It has a static effect on. It's so unsettling. This is horror. Postal 1997 is a horror game. Okay, I'm simping too hard. But this is so good. The entry is very creative too. Postal Dude describing himself as a gardener, policing the weeds and the poisons. Credit for creativity. The war journal keeps getting more depressing though. Postal Dude is questioning himself if he will make it to the base. He believes he's infected and will die. Yeah, I like this because it implies that Postal Dude won't have a happy ending. Once he saves the country from the infection, there's no going back. This, in my opinion, is the best one. It's the most depressing one. This is the only one where a piano is being played, and you can hear a demonic laughter. In my opinion, the piano playing is a symbol of humanity left in Postal Dude, and the demonic laughter lurking in the end makes this just... really sad. The art is really gloomy. Like, in my opinion, I see Postal Dude slowly decaying. He's slowly pushing forward, it helps that both the entry and the war journal acknowledge that Postal Dude is bleeding, dying, and feeling weak. He is both mentally and physically crumbling. It's a very sad piece. It's a powerful one. For a small indie game that people claim to be a mass shooter simulator, it really does make you feel all sorts of emotions. I love it.
I like this art a lot. In my opinion, I see that figure as Postal Dude, and the twisted vines are corrupting him. The vines are very pretty too. Not a lot to say about this one. It's not bad at all. I like the sound as well. You can hear what appears to be machinery. It has that surreal feel to it. The entry, in my opinion, is breaking the fourth wall. It references machineries of the death grind relentlessly and mindlessly turning. Now think about it. Isn't that what we do? Every day we mindlessly wake up, work, go home, rest, repeat. Even in the game, you could fairly describe the gameplay as a grind. I don't know, I love the meta-ness of how machines do what they do mindlessly, connect that to poster dude, killing, and then what we do in real life. The war journal is more hopeful. Poster dude is going to that base, and nothing can stop him. In my opinion, this is the most important one. This one is the only loading screen that provides a unique perspective compared to the other ones. In my opinion, this is the only time where there is no demonic imagery or any aftermath of any disjointed vision. For the first time, and the only time, we see Postal Dude for who he is, a human being. I believe this because of the glass shattering. We are looking at Postal Dude from a soldier's perspective. A soldier who's been shot by Postal Dude. You may ask, but how can you be so sure that's Postal Dude? Here is the art that proves that this is Postal Dude. When the end is near, we see who he is. I love it a lot. Look at his expression. He's not happy at all. Seems stressed. Not the bloodlust monster that the entry makes him out to be. Both the entry and the war journal describe this as the end. Do keep in mind the entry uses we. The entry is like, time to end this, the climax is here. The war journal is more heroic, like a final push of desperation. Postal Dude says, let's rock and roll. In my opinion, it's like a last cry, today is the day I live, that sort of thing. I don't think it's cheesy, I actually think it's well written. <laughs> Okay, this one is unique because it doesn't have a war journal, only an entry. There wasn't one in the manual. This makes sense because the events that happen at the elementary school happens inside of Postal Dude's head. The entries are thoughts in his mind. I think so anyway. The art is just fantastic. I love how within the eye there appears to be part of a building. It looks like a school building. I love how it's left up to the player to determine who is who. Is the Shadow Postal Dude? Is that a demon? Are the sounds we hear a demon commanding Postal Dude? Also, the screaming that can be heard is very upsetting, disturbing. The entry mentions the hive being cleansers and the source of the corruption being caught. Does this mean that the children have been infected too? If we are to believe that the germ warfare is real, then this is just heartbreaking. Those poor children. In addition, the voice actually does say something in a language. It's a Gregorian chant. It must be said that the last lines were not included. Postal 1997, proudly making you depressed and horrified, baby. Heads up, before we talk about the extra levels, they do reuse sounds. The special delivery ones use the Air Force Base, and Super Postal use the farm and the construction site one. We will focus more on the art, and the entry slash war journals, okay? Keep in mind that the date and the sequence of events conflict with the main game. Correct me if I'm wrong. The later expansions date 1998. By the end, you go back to the elementary school, which happened at 1997. Some people see it as the elementary school takes place at the end, including the mental asylum bit. So after the main levels, and then the extra levels, then 
the elementary school happens and Postal Dude ends up in the asylum. Then other people believe he escaped the mental asylum, then the extra levels happen. Now, what does Marceline the Worthless think? Fiends, Postal Dude is an unreliable narrator. His mind is rotting and decaying. Of course the dates and the events make no sense. Why would it make sense? I do believe the events and the levels did happen, it's just that the dates are messed up. And to spoil the fun, remember, Running With Scissors changed the dates for the expansions and the Redux version to match the dates they were released. So don't think too much about it, go with what you believe with. I see this as alternative art for the Central Park one. The pose is very similar. I like how there are lines of corruption all over Postal Dude's head. The entry is just really, really witty demonic talk with supermarket puns. It's actually kind of funny. It's nice that it's a little relaxed and less serious from the main game stuff. And I don't mind it at all, really. Even the war journal is like, what happened? How did I get out of the mental asylum? What? I really love this one. This is really freaky. It's really cool. I don't know why modern horror monsters and games can't be this good. That hand thing. Imagine that grabbing on your head. Yee! Well, the entry is like the earth shy itself. <laughs> of course, the war journal makes reference to the veterans and Postal Dude being cute is like, I bring my own war. Haha. <laughs> Fun. The art looks like a Resident Evil monster. I kind of dig it. Maybe this is what Postal Dude sees as well? I don't know. That's dope though. The entry is just like, okay, I can't take the entry seriously anymore. It hits some people. Yum, yum, yum. War Journal is self aware at least. Hey, don't I be frank here, I don't know what this is. Kind of looks like a mother tending her baby, and that baby is Postal Dude? But he's surrounded by demonic forces? I don't know. Maybe the light means he was once a good person? The entry is like, I've fallen and I can't get up! Oh yeah, the war journal. It's comforting to know that even Postal Dude is tired of the shit of going to random places. He wants it to be over, damn it! I really love this one, especially the head because it represents my own interpretation of what's happening to Postal Dude. We will get there soon, I promise. It's very creative too, and the fire effect is effective. It makes me feel uneasy. The entry of course is more demonic shit, bubbling blood? What? But the war journal does something I like, and it fits with what's happening to Postal Dude. Let me explain. I really hate it when video games and movies make up shitty reasons to go to different locations and it's kind of random, and it takes you out of the moment. Resident Evil 6 does this a lot, and it's a good example of it. Postal 1, being ahead of its time, knew this, and cuts the bullshit out. It uses the term, blink of an eye. Postal Dude woken up into a new place, but here's the kicker. Has he really left America? What if he's in an Asian market? 
I know, I know, before you feign say it, Tokyo and the Osaka levels are based off in real life places in Japan. The only says are weebs. All I'm saying is it's a nice reasoning why Postal Dude is in Japan. It's up to your interpretation. I like it. Not much to be said. They reused the head from the Tokyo level, the sword that's okay, and the crab that's dope. It's good. Gotta love the Godzilla reference. Arrgh. The War Journal concludes this as the end. And I'm gonna be honest, the Air Force base was much better. But hey yo, at least Postal Dude has the last try, sort of. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be cynical here. It's not impactful at all. The expansion is good, and the level itself is amazing. And I don't blame Running With Scissors at all for this, but the Air Force Base one was too good. You couldn't top it, you know? It's not that the Osaka level was bad, the Air Force Base one was too good. Postal 1 has an outro and credits. They have their own sounds, but they do share the same art. Overall, I love them both. When you watch them, you don't feel good. You feel dirty. You feel wrong. You're no hero. You feel like shit. And it's effective. Not enough games do that. They play it safe with a happy ending. I'm glad that Running With Scissors took this route. They could have easily made this a dream, or, oh, these events never really happened. They committed to a dark experience, and the end credits and outro hammer that in. I really appreciate that. Also, I love how the menu is called an intro. When you leave the game, it's an outro. It reminds me of a theatrical play. Oh yeah, Postal Dude's laugh at the end makes you feel really, really uncomfortable. Is that the demon laughing? Or is it Postal Dude's insanity? I don't know, but I do know that laugh is horrifying. Especially since you only hear it at the end of the credits and seeing the dead bodies make his breath. Honourable mention goes to the art and sound in the Mental Asylum bit. Not much to be said. It's really effective horror imagery and the sound is just perfect. That screaming in the end. Oof. It's a very cool contrast of what a mental asylum is. It's a place that's designed to help people, but here it looks like hell. Maybe it is a nice place, and it does help people, but Postal Dude thinks he's in hell. We don't know, and that's the point. the moment you've been waiting for. Finally, it's time to talk about the ways you can interpret the game with theories. Game theories. <laughs> Some of these I formed on my own, others I found online. Intros out of the way, let's go. It's no secret I use the term demonic when describing the standard entries. There's a reason why. It's highly implied that Postal Dude is possessed by a demon. The in-game voice files for Rick Hunter's lines are labelled as demon, which means that the voice lines you hear while playing Postal aren't from Postal Dude himself, it's the demon talking. 
I know, it's kind of messy because in Postal 2, Rich Hunter came back to voice Postal Dude, and that is Postal Dude's voice. Just to clear the air, what you do hear in Postal 1 is Postal Dude's voice, but it's the demon talking? Heads up, that is just my interpretation of the information I've gathered. I do understand some people believe it's the actual voice is the demon's one, not Postal Dude's, but my explanation makes it less confusing. But then again, maybe this is all by design since Postal 1 is a confusing mess and you're not supposed to have the answers. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt, that's all I'm saying. And there's a lot to back up this demon possession idea. For example, in the gameplay, Postal Dude can hold lots of weapons, grenades, and he can pretty much take any of them out swiftly. Plus, he can tank rockets, bullets, fire, and remember, he keeps going on a killing spree for six whole days. And remember, he doesn't rest, he keeps on going. No human being could ever do that. No one could ever endure that. But, with a demon controlling Postal Dude, giving him power of health, yeah, it's more believable. Within this theory, there's a sub-theory people state called the Meta Demon Theory, and pretty much implies you, the player, are the demon. You're the one controlling Postal Dude. You know, in a meta sense, since you are literally controlling Postal Dude. Now, I don't believe this myself, but I do think it's a cool idea. It's interesting to think about. The veteran soldier theory is definitely an interpretation that I could get behind. As the name of the theory implies, Postal Dude was a veteran soldier who served some time in the army, and when he tried to reconnect back to society, he went POSTAL! Sorry, I, I can't help myself. <laughs> There's actually quite a bit of evidence for this theory. Postal Dude uses a wide range of weapons and grenades. In Postal Dude's perspective, it started off as a diary, but he changed it to war journal. It explains why the police would go as far as firing rockets at him, since they're dealing with an individual who was trained to be a killing machine, and in the war journals, there's a lot of reference to war, such as knowing where a napalm is, understanding how he has the advantage in the mine due to how narrow it is, calling himself a soldier, and knowing about different types of warfare. What makes this very depressing is that in the real world, it's the norm that when veteran soldiers return back when serving some time, it becomes difficult for them to live a normal life. And this leads to the veteran soldiers becoming frustrated, angry, annoyed, and they end up hurting people, even killing them. Hence, a Sam term was formed, going postal. It pretty much means when someone becomes so aggressive or so upset, it leads them to yell or act violently. And just a fun little fact for you, the actual post office service, you know, the one that delivers mail, really did not want the Sam term to stick. When Running With Scissors actually named the game Postal, they complained and complained and wanted them to change the name purely because of the Sam term. They did not want it to stick, and it being 2022, we know that Running With Scissors did not change it. Moving on, some of the war journals imply that Postal Dude had some difficulties adjusting to a new lifestyle. In the home war journal, he talks about how he's told he needs to leave his home. His home! He's confused. He's upset. So let's recap everything. He's been trained his whole life to use weapons and to kill people. He's struggling to reconnect back to society. He's confused. He's upset. He's just been told to leave his home by a stranger. Yeah, under those situations, it's possible he snapped and he believes he's going to be killed and he has to defend his home. He has to defend himself. I find this to be very depressing because in the real world, this sort of stuff happens all the time and there can be measures in place to help prevent such a thing. But there isn't. Going to the army, serving time, taking a life, witnessing death, losing friends, it changes you. This theory is really cool because it involves changing how you play the game. It kind of makes Postal Dude innocent. It kind of makes him have morals. Well, okay, so you do have to kill the hostiles, but remember, they are the police, aka the pigs. By the way, we also need more games where the objective is to kill police. Fuck the pigs. All cops are bastards. Anyway, so how do you change up the gameplay? Simply, only return fire when being shot at. 
Do not execute the hostiles and do not kill any innocent NPCs. To progress to the next level requires you to kill a certain percentage of hostiles, aka the police pigs. They shoot first. Even when you're just walking, they attack you. So when they shoot at you, return fire. Never be the aggressor. Arguably, this makes Pulsar Dude acting in self-defense. The trigger happy pigs do not even attempt to arrest Pulsar Dude. They go straight for the kill. Obviously, I highly recommend you play Postal this way. It completely flips the idea of Postal Dude killing for the thrill of it. It makes him out to be someone who's trying to find help, but the fucking pig police don't want to give him help, but want him dead, so he has to defend himself. Just to add that even the pig police will shoot through the innocent people, even killing them to kill Postal Dude. That's how trigger happy they are. Oh, fuck the police. Regardless if you like this theory or not, I still highly recommend you play the game like this. It's such a cool and different experience. I kind of see it like the pacifism way to play in Postal 2. By simply changing an element of how you play, the game gives you a whole new experience. It's really fun. This theory doesn't have much to back it up, so put your tinfoil hats on. This theory is fully committed to the war journals and everything about the infection is real. Postal Dude is the hero who saved his proud country by stopping the infection from spreading. He needed to go to the Air Force base to stop them from sending infection germ missiles onto the country's population. The outskirts war journal says the infection could come from the Air Force base. He's being stopped by the pig police because the infection was planned by the USA's own government. Dun, dun, dun. Why would the government do such a thing? Mm, I don't know. Capitalism, I guess? Yeah, it's a wild theory and it doesn't help that there's only little evidence to back it up. The name of the theory is based on the achievements from both Postal and Postal Readouts that you get from completing the game without killing any innocent NPCs. <laughs> This one is pretty simple. In the ending of the game, Postal Dude ends up in a mental asylum due to insanity. So, knowing that spin on it, what if Postal Dude was insane from the very start? This interpretation means that every entry, every war journal is all made up. None of it's real. Postal Dude is out of control. He's mad. He's gone wild. This would explain how the dates don't really make sense. The Tokyo War Journal, Postal Dude says in a blink of an eye, He's across the globe. He's so diluted that he thinks he's in Japan. In the Redux version of Tokyo and Osaka, you can hear the NPC speak in English and Japanese, meaning he could still be in the US of A. Yeah, it's an okay theory, and I will say it can be interesting to think about the game like this, but it just removes the fun. The fun of thinking of other explanations, interpretations. This theory goes, eh, he was insane, that's it. I, I guess this is the most realistic one. The victim theory is the one I believe in. This theory is simple. Postal Dude was a victim throughout the whole game. Before you fucking morons type down in the comments down below, just because I say he's a victim doesn't mean he's innocent. He does horrible stuff which I don't approve of. Okay? Good. So, let me explain. He was used by the demon. Postal Dude had a bad day. He was losing his home. Started to break down. The demon saw this as an opportunity to cause death. To fulfill their bloodlust. Since Postal Dude knows how to use all sorts of weapons and tools, he was the perfect individual to use. You know what they say, it's not the gun that kills people, but people kill people, and the guns are the tools to do so? Well, I believe that Postal Dude never killed anyone. He was a tool, being used for the killings. The demon is using Postal Dude as a gun. In addition, I believe that both the demonic entries and the war journals both fit this theory. I believe that the demon is tricking Postal Dude into thinking he's saving the USA population by making up some germ warfare infection that's happening. There's a voice line I would like you to hear. Yes, it's still the demon talking, but 
I believe he's talking to Postal Dude. Only you can stop the evil. Only you can stop the evil. To me, this is the demon telling Postal Dude only he can stop the infection that's happening. In addition, it would explain why some of the entries in war journals are similar. For example, the ghetto. Postal Dude probably had a rough experience there, and the demon would know this since it's in Postal Dude's mind. In the end, once the slaughtering is over, the elementary school vision we see is Postal Dude finally taking back control. The demon wants Postal Dude to do the unthinkable and harm the children, but Postal Dude still has humanity in him and fights back. Postal Dude might have prevented the deaths of children, but ultimately it's too late. The demon used Postal Dude to go on a six day killing spree. He cannot bear that guilt. As the demon flees from Postal Dude's mind, it leaves him insane. It breaks Postal Dude. He was already breaking down. Now his own mind is in ruins, and he can't function anymore, and has to be sent to the mental asylum. The demon wins. The outro art is a victory for the demon. It had a bloodlust, and it went for the slaughter spree at the expense of Postal Dude. Postal Dude gets shot at, bleeds, suffers mentally and physically, all for the enjoyment of some wicked demon. I believe Postal Dude was a victim in all of this. The cruel reality is that everyone else thinks he was just a madman who went on a killing spree. They will never know what set him off. I mentioned before that the bridge loading screen fits with my theory. This is because we see a regular human teeth that represents Postal Dude, and how we see him, how everyone else sees him. The demonic teeth, however, represents the demon hiding within him, controlling him. We don't see that, neither does the rest of the population, and the rotting teeth next to the demonic one is decaying, which represents the toll it's taking on Postal Dude. In addition, the demonic imagery is what the infected people look like, the Postal Dude. The demon is tricking Postal Dude into thinking they're hideous monstrosities. I personally feel very sorry for Postal Dude. The war journals really make you feel sympathy for him. When thinking about my own take, it was easy to ignore the demonic entries and stick with the war journals because it makes Postal Dude more human. I remembered that the war journals were never available in-game, only in the manual. Running with says intended the player to witness the demonic stuff. I asked myself, why not both be canon? Why can't both happen at the same time? The demonic bloodlust talk happens within Postal Dude's mind. However, the war journal was written down by Postal Dude. Written in a manual? Wink wink. Now, this is only my interpretation of the game. Maybe I am a softie, but I personally never believe someone is evil because they're evil. I hate that type of writing in stories. It's pretty cringe. I believe something occurred which leads to evil deeds. Well, in Postal, I believe the demon is that someone making Postal Dude do the evil deeds. So I'm going to brag about my theory a little bit because it took me three pages to write where the other ones took me like a paragraph and I want to, you know, promote my theory. <laughs> but I believe that my theory makes the events in Postal even scarier. Why? Simple. Because this could happen to any one of us. One bad day and then the demon comes along to influence us to do evil deeds. Maybe not an external demon, you know, from hell, but our own inner demons. An excellent game that also does this whole it could happen to anyone horror is Silent Hill 4. So yeah, my fairy makes the game even more scarier, take that. <laughs> At this point in the video, hopefully you will understand that Postal 1 isn't just a mass shooter simulator. The story, the loading screens, the war journals, the theories, etc. All these elements allow you to have your own interpretation, your own meanings. The reason why Postal 1 does it so effectively is the fact that it's ambiguous. Wow, what a lovely word. 
Running with scissors doesn't give you any answers. The ending narration says we will never know what set him off. That's the point. We can only interpret what the game means and why Pulsar Dude went on a killing spree. Could be a moron and say it was only a mass shooter simulator to promote shooting to young people. However, due to the ambiguous, god damn it, I love saying that word, nature of Postal, you can't simply label it as one thing. You're going to ignore the war journals, the entries, the elementary school? Looks like that theory doesn't really hold up. But you see, what makes Postal 1 amazing is that you can think of any interpretation you want, but since it's ambiguous, you can argue and discuss what it means. Even my own theory, with Postal Dude being a victim, you could argue against it. Hell, if you think that theory isn't good, tell me about it. Fuck it, I will even help you. What if Postal Dude made the whole thing up? There's no proof that Eternal Demon is controlling Postal Dude. For all we know, he could have made that up to give him the excuse to kill people. See? It doesn't really hold up. There's flaws within it. And that's intentional. Postal 1 is being ambiguous. And it's its biggest strength. It makes it more disturbing. In my opinion, the best horror is the one where the mind does all the scaring. When stuff is explained to you, the more you know of something, the less disturbing it gets. But, if it stays ambiguous, Thinking about it, knowing that you will truly never understand, I think that's scarier. What is more horrifying than the unknown? I love thinking about Postal, about what it means. Another game, Frambo, does it so well too. I love games that do this. Now, the question is how does it scale on the ambiguous scale? Which I totally did not make up by the way. Is it like Silent Hill 2? That game, in my opinion, can be described as an indescribable experience. But some things are definitive. For example, what is underneath Pyramid Head's helmet? We don't know. And we will never know. But what we do know is that he belongs to James Sunderland. He's James's monster. So seeing him outside of Silent Hill 2 makes me hella offended. Even the soundtrack is like, what is white noise? No, Serial, what is that soundtrack? How do you describe it? It's alien-like, out of this world, what does it mean? Of course, I have my own feelings on it, but you get what I mean. Or is it like Limbo? Which, by the way, is the most high art, artsy game, art game, art art game ever. That game looks at Silent Hill 2 and it's like, you have atmosphere? Bite my ass, I'm going to be pure atmosphere. No music, only real world ambient sounds. You have dialogue and give the player information. We only have one line, that the boy is looking for his sister. And it's in the game store page. That's it, not even in the game. Everything else, you have to interpret. I ain't telling you a thing. No, Serial, Play Dead Studio refuses to talk about what Limbo means. <laughs> I wonder what Silent Hill 2 would be like if only James talked about Mary at the start and then there was no other dialogue. Hmm, that would be interesting. Plus, Silent Hill 2's endings are also ambiguous too. Well, almost all of them. Well, I mean, there's some closure. <laughs> Water is my true ending for Silent Hill 2. Fuck that, Limbo just cuts it, cuts it, there's that's it, no letter, nothing, cuts, ah! James, you get some closure, well, not in Limbo, you don't know, we will never know. Why am I talking about Limbo and Silent Hill 2 so much in a Postal 1 video? I don't know, and why am I streaming? So, where does Postal 1 fit in the madness known as ambiguousness? I put it in the region above Silent Hill 2. It does give you information, but it's nowhere near as vague as Zembo. Another factor that plays in the part of making Postal 1 an experience filled with depression, fear, insanity, and the unknown Hey, that's the title of the video, is that it's not a power fantasy. Video games can be used to tell stories. They help us escape from the messed up reality we call the real world. You wanna be a mage in an RPG? Go wild. 
or kill some zombies with a wide range of guns? No problem, mate. Maybe you want to enter a void of depression and be emotionally drained. Oh, baby. You get my point. For the case of Postal 1, what makes the experience work so good is that it tries its best not to be a power fantasy. Let's go through the examples. There is no point system, the gameplay is stiff, picking up new weapons feels bland and boring, there's only one execution, and it sucks, there is no Doom-esque music during the gameplay, going to the next level you are rewarded with more disturbing art and demonic words, and the ending is just... depressing. The character you play as ends up in a mental asylum. I should mention, look at the character you play as. He's no hero. He's not a good guy. He's just an ordinary individual. Again, look at the original portrayal of Postal Dude. He doesn't look like a hero. He looks sad, afraid, stressed out. Oh, and just to be a cynical asshole, the gameplay sections look kind of meh. Like the loading screen arts, they've aged like wine. But the gameplay graphics? It looks like shit. I know, I know, it's 1997, I don't want to be too mean, but it, it looks kind of bad, come on. But that's not a bad thing. Nowadays, everything needs to be pretty. And okay, I like me some pretty stuff too, but you do know what I also appreciate? The rougher look. I made a video about it too. Woo! By taking away the power fantasy, it enhances all of the darker themes and tones that the game has. Now, let's say Postal 1 was a power fantasy. It would undermine the maturity and the darker tones. The war journals, the ending, imagine a point system, and epic music. It would be so jarring. Hmm, that reminds me of something. Something to do with a redux. Hmm. Oh, just to mention this now, because one of you fiends might ask. There was a game which I refer to as... Other game? that tried to be a pure power fantasy, and that game was also about a mass shooter, and yeah, it was cringe. Like, really, really cringe. Apparently, some people refer it to as a successor to Postal 1. Yeah, no, that's not up for debate either, don't mention me, don't comment about that, nah, you're just wrong. You're just, you're just wrong, okay? That game is nowhere near a successor to Postal 1. I don't think the game could be a successor to Postal 1, so don't even mention it. The Postal series went into the dark humour route, then continuing with horror. I will say that yeah, the comedy is really good. In a meta way. Apart from you three, fuck off, piece of shit. But Postal 1 does have dark humour, and is meta in some way. For 1997, it was ahead of its time. The narration about all the time to study him. Right now. <laughs> Get it? We're studying the game, we're studying Postal Dude. Get it? Serial though. In the real world, when horrifying events happen, studies are done. YouTubers make videos. That's self-aware as fuck. Several voice lines are both funny, ironic, and meta. Proudly, Proudly made, made in, in the, the USA, USA baby. baby. Where do I start? Isn't there a bit of irony when people get killed in mass shootings? Those weapons used to kill them are guns made in the US of A? Next. You don't, you don't sell, sell Postal? postal? This sign can only be heard in the Easy Mart level. And yes, of course, this is a reference of Postal being banned and blacklisted. It's both funny and self-aware. Next, nudity, nudity is, is offensive. offensive. Yeah, this one is funny and deep in metaness. Metaness? It's a jab at how age ratings are inconsistent. It's a very long and wild topic. But to keep it simple, even though some games may have massive gore, violence, and can be disturbing, they can be sold without a problem. But nudity? Oh baby, that's its own league. Trying to include nudity in a video game will instantly make the game's age rating go to mature. Hell, if a game has one second of certain parts being erected, it enters pornographic territory. I understand that there are all sorts of levels of violence and nudity, but that makes giving them an age rating even more messy. I do also believe that they are important. They do have a role in keeping children safe, which is important. If you think they should be removed completely, well, you can fuck off, you ugly moron. But yeah, it's just a massive shit show. It's really funny, like dark humour funny, because Postal Dude finds nudity offensive, but mass shooting people, like animals, is not offensive at all. No problem. But the nudity. Oh no, that's the problem. Ah! 
One more for the lows. Is this poster found in the Tokyo level? This has to be a jab at Japanese censorship laws. Like, the eyes are censored, but the oversized boobs are okay? And this kind of hints at the real life laws in Japan. Serial, look up the laws that Japan has about nudity and porn. Boobs is okay, but the other stuff, you've got to cover up. Oh no, you so can't tell what there is right now. No sorry, it, it makes sense to censor this, but the, the boobs are okay, I guess. Oh yeah, there are lots of shop signs and posters throughout the game that also add a little to the humour. So yeah, Poster 1 has challenges mode and a demo for some extra content? Yeah, not much to be said. I guess that's cool and a little bit of fun, but let's be honest, the main campaign is where the goat slaughter is at. Wait, who slaughtered a goat? No, seriously, I want to know. While doing some research, I found some footage of Poster 1 being presented at E3 in 1997. Running with Scissors themselves uploaded this video, which is so cool. I highly recommend watching it because it gives you the atmosphere of what it was like in 1997 when the game came out. I do want to mention one thing about it. The fucking posters! Oh, oh my, my god. god! This is like the original Bear Witch movie levels of marketing. So like, I don't agree that the game got banned, and it shouldn't have been blacklisted. But I will say this, I do understand why people got upset when they saw those posters. Using faces like that, quotes, by adding sense of realism to it can fool people into thinking that running with scissors is using real life tragedies to gain more attention for their game about mass shooting. I can see why some people would be upset as an individual who has a second class in business studies and focused in the law of marketing and the bill of human resources. Yes, I am bragging because I spent way too long in university. However, it somewhat makes my worthless existence in this world have some value. Yes, the human resources means I'm a people person, sort of. My opinion on this is that it's clearly shock marketing. That type of marketing is very risky. You either go full shock factor, which can really alienate people, which leads them to refusing to buy your product, but it can also appeal to those who are curious, which leads them to check it out. Alternatively, if it's not shocking enough, well, it gets forgotten. No one really cares. This is a very simple generalization, but remember, there are so many factors to consider when it comes to marketing. This ain't a lecture, morons. So with the posters, I think they're shocking enough. They definitely get your attention. Even if some people won't buy postal, at the very least, there'll be others who will check out the website. If I were to change anything, I would change the word live in the corner. I would use news, or rec, with a red font, like the real life ones. In my opinion, News or Rec has that real edge to it, makes it more shocking. In addition, I love how the posters also include the question, what went wrong? Even with the marketing, it still asks that question, about why Postal Dude does what he does. Little details like that are amazing. That's it. Postal 1997. A game that was labelled as a mass shooting simulator, but was deep, layered and complex. A game that made you feel many emotions. Not to mention, great voice work by Rick Hunter, superb art and soundtrack. It also is a great horror game. The horror of the unknown is very scary. The most scariest of all horrors, really. That's why Postal 1 holds up so well as a horror game. People come up with their own theories, their own interpretations, trying to find meaning in the game filled with only madness, insanity, and the unknown. And I think that's scary. Knowing that the game will never give you an answer. Nothing will be explained to you. Nothing at all. It adds to the madness. The mind. Your mind is the greatest tool to scare you. Now, we all know Running With Scissors went with the dark humour route with Postal 2, and yeah, yeah, it's really fun, and it's amazing, and they did a great transition from horror to comedy, masterfully if I may add. With so many horror games using the cheap formula of jump scares, monster type enemies chasing you with cringy music, or all of them combined, I'm looking at you Resident Evil remakes, I beg of you, Running With Scissors, please make another horror game. 
It could be a small one. You dudes are so talented. Postal 1 is such a good horror game. And I want to mention this again. Even though the art is pretty disturbing, the soundtrack is all disjointed. I think the horror in Postal 1 is beautiful. The soundtrack is relaxing. It's unique. It's creative. You just don't get games like Postal 1 anymore. And I know, it's weird calling the horror in the game beautiful, but it's just so unique, creative, you know? Like, you don't get horror like this anymore, you really appreciate what Postal 1 does, and you know, it should be praised. Anywho, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoy, and psych! It's Redux time! I know, I know, I mentioned that in the intro. Since the video is really, really long, I thought you might forget that we would be talking about the remake of Poster 1. Be honest, did you think this was the end of the video? Be honest now. Yeah? Yeah? Come on, come on now. I know you'd all be like, no, no, I see the length of the video, there's still more time, but let's be honest, did you fall for it? Did you fall for it? No? Oh. Uh, okay. Well, surprise! Postal Redux is a remake of the first Postal game. It looks better, runs better, and overall I would definitely list it as a good example of a remake. Furthermore, since Postal 1 is free, buying the Redux is a nice way to show support for running with scissors. Now, with that said though, <laughs> Postal Redux is a great game, but it kind of loses the edge that the original game had. It's really weird describing it. I love Redux. But due to the improvements, it takes away a bit from the experience that the original provided. It's one of those examples where improvements to a game can hurt the experience. Saying that is really, really hella weird. But hopefully when I talk about the differences, you will understand what I mean. Now, it's not all bad. Some of the changes, especially one in particular, actually adds to the experience the original game provided. Enough beating around the bush. Let's get into Postal Redux. Ah, I almost forgot. Rick Hunter came back to record the voice lines for Redux, and it's amazing because he's that good. But I have heard people saying that he sounds bored, or he doesn't have the same flair, versus the voice lines he made for the 1997 version. Uh, Fiend? Redux came out 19 years later! Mr. Hunter has gotten older! Of course he sounds a bit different! His voice has aged like wine, if you ask me. You do understand that a great deal of time has passed by, right? His voice is great in Redux. Maybe the 1997 game, he had that youth energy. Regardless, it's still good! Oh, I almost, almost forgot. The trailer for Redux is also really well made. Especially the last part. Hearing the slick music throughout the trailer, but then at the end the ambient music plays, it's like it hasn't forgotten its roots to Postal 1. I really like it. For reals now, let's talk about Redux. There are so many differences, so let's tackle them one by one, shall we? The Carnival is a brand new stage that was just made for Redux. It has its own loading screen art, entry, war journal, soundtrack, clowns too, and I love it. They didn't have to make another level, remaking the standard levels and the ones from the expansion alone was enough, but running with scissors going the extra mile, I think that's cool and I wish more devs did that. I love how the new stage is based on a carnival too. Clowns, rides, the food, the music, they can be fun or scary depending on the perspective. Even the war journal references that idea. In my opinion, it adds to the horror element that the original Postal has. Importantly, it doesn't feel out of place. The level, the loading screen art, the soundtrack, it all fits in the world of Postal. The next difference is a big one. Redux has a whole new ending, Instead of the elementary school from the original Postal, the new one is called The End. Here it is.
So, it's not bad. It's more symbolic than the original ending, I think, maybe? Postal Dude sees his own grave. It lowers, he starts breaking down. And if you look at the hostile number, it's at 1, and then when the grave lowers, it drops to 0. It's implied that Postal Dude is breaking down because he was the hostile all along. Like I said, it's not a bad ending, but the original one was way more impactful. In my opinion, it made Postal Dude have more humanity. The ending was disturbing and way more uncomfortable. Now, now, I'm not bashing the ending in Redux. It's good, it's good. I especially like how the hostile counter changes. Including that touch was just wicked. But, why not include the original? There's a cool feature in Redux where if you play the campaign on higher difficulties, instead of seeing the entries, you see the war journals. Why not do that for the ending? Maybe include a postal difficulty, and if you beat the campaign on that, you see the original ending. I don't know, I felt like it could have been a cool easter egg. Now it's time to get depressed. I found out with some research why the ending didn't make it into Redux. Someone from Line with Scissors was interviewed, and the question was asked. To summarise, it's been years since the original Postal game came out, but the sad reality is that school shootings is the norm in the US of A. Back in 1997, the team wanted to make the ending to be powerful, impactful, shocking, disturbing, yeah? And it is. It was something that was truly horrific, the unthinkable, the idea of shooting up a school. That's no longer the case now. Y you know what? No, 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 fuck it. I'm gonna say that again. I want to enforce what I just said. Running with Scissors makes games that are outrageous, offensive, over the top, crazy. They will go to all sorts of levels to make such a game, but due to how often school shootings happen in the USA, they felt like including that scene is no longer an unthinkable action, no longer is it disturbing, it's not impactful, it doesn't make you uncomfortable, because it's the norm now. Let that sink for a second, just stop and think about that for a second. How depressing is that? Running with scissors draws the line by not allowing children to get killed in their games because it's such a horrible thing. In the original, seeing Postal Dude attempting, attempting to harm children was horrible enough, but now 19 years later, they felt like that idea wouldn't be impactful due to how often real life ones happen, like how normal it's become, how often there are victims of school shootings. Ah, this is getting depressing, let's move on. Being a remake, of course there are gameplay improvements. It feels less stiff, there are more weapons, more executions, and overall, it just feels better. I will talk about why this hurts the experience later. In addition, stages have been adjusted. One of my favourite changes is by including English speaking NPCs in the Tokyo and Osaka levels. Now I know that does sound a bit weird, but I do like this change because it just adds more to the insanity that Postal Dude is going through, you know, his mind is truly becoming fucked up. It's making no sense. Plus, it goes in line with the war journal for Tokyo. How on earth did he reach Tokyo in a blink of an eye? Maybe he's still in the US of A? These little details really add to the experience. There are also new game modes, which I'll talk about later. Finally, being a remake, you have more settings in the options menu, and that's always a plus. I love the special effects section, like it adds so much replay value. Oh, and this one, of course. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. No, fuck off, I ain't talking about that game. Unless a ton of you fiends want me to, I might talk about it in a future video. But right now, I have no interest. Yeah, this has to be its own section and you can't be surprised why. Because oh baby, there's a lot to talk about here. So, they remade the loading screen art, and some soundtracks have been adjusted too. In my opinion, I feel very mixed about it. Some of them, especially one of them, is really, really good. And that alone is worth buying Redux. But the others? I feel like they're really underwhelming. They're great, right? They're not bad. The quality is still amazing. But, versus the original Postal from 1997, they lose their edge. The horror, the disturbingness. It's weird because they're not bad, but they're not good either. <laughs> alright, alright, enough of this. Time to look at them.
So the intro is like the best example of what I mean when I say it loses its edge. Yes, the art does it better. The quality is greater. No more cropped image of a mouth. You will be missed. But listen to the sound being played. The original felt more demonic. Like, it wasn't even music, but it was like a roar. But now in Redux, it's a guitar sound, and it's so blatantly a guitar sound. It's not bad, but you lose that horror element. That raw, gritty, dirty, disgusting feeling. Oh yeah, speaking about the cropped mouth, in my opinion, it's much better, because it just had so much more oomph to it. Was it a roar? Was it screaming in pain? The Redux one, that's gross. I do like it, but I wouldn't call it horrifying. On the other hand, the cropped mouth from Postal 1, that's scary. And it's just a cropped mouth, what am I saying? It's a cropped mouth, yet it's so much better. <laughs> I do like what they did in the background in Redux. It feels like you're being trapped inside a madman's head. Hopefully you now understand where I'm coming from. Redux is not bad at all. It's great, but it does take away from the experience that the original one offered. I adore the Redux version. Yes, no more cropped head, I know, sad times, boo. But I love that the mouth has merged with the wall. It helps to reinforce that Postal Dude is his home. Us too. Our homes are a part of us, in a way. In addition, I love the animal sounds being more utilised here. They were in the original one too, but you really couldn't hear them a lot, and it's okay because they weren't inside the home, of course, so it's muffled, but the Redux took it and made it more horrific, and that's always a plus. So I rate this new remade loading screen art a B+. Ah, so the Redux version made changes to make it more of a truck stop. I appreciate that. The sound is more restored and overall better quality versus the original. And it has this echo effect which I think is really cool. But, 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 the art. It's disturbing a little, I guess, sure, maybe, but it looks cartoonish. The original had that mature, in real life look to it. The bodies looked real, and it added to the horror of the game. But the Redux version, its art style changed, and it doesn't have that feel to it. I will give credit and say the buildings and the truck look fantastic. The blood looks excellent. The body in the back looking disturbing as fuck too. But by taking away the in real life mature art style away, it doesn't have the same impact. It's a shame because it's a good piece of art. Just compared to the original, it's very, very underwhelming. So yeah, they kept the whole blurring effect from the original, and they even added more sound effects which is really cool and I appreciate it. But there's an elephant in the room. 
Instead of the corpse hiding in plain sight, we're given two shadowy figures. Who are they, we don't know. Is one of them meant to be Postal Dude? Are they the pig police? Is this what Postal Dude sees? Maybe this is what the infection does. We don't know, and of course, that's a good thing. Asking questions and not getting answers. But, my issue with it is, they feel so out of place. The blurring effect is nice, but the shadowy figures are untouched. It was like they worked on the background first, then inserted the shadowy figures, and honestly, it feels off-putting. And I'm gonna say it, the cropped mouth looks better. Yes, it's a cropped mouth, but it fits with the design of Postal 1. Plus, the corpse merging with the art and hiding in front of you in plain sight was such a good little detail. It was a nice touch. But now instead we get these bold, out of place shadowy figures. So yeah, not a fan of this one. I can pretty much repeat what I've said about the chart stop one here. The art quality is great, the blood effect looks excellent, and the sound with some differences is dope. However, the art style takes away from the maturity and the in real lifeness of the original. The original postal felt more real, more mature, more terrifying. I guess it kinda is in Redux version, but it's a far cry to the original. Overall, I think it's meh. I really like this version. Yeah, the whole decaying tooth is gone, and there's more teeth now, but it looks really cool. And like, if that thing opens its mouth and tries to bite you, yeah, I'm running away. I don't want to get bit. I will say I wish the teeth in the Redux version was more dirty, bloodier, etc. But apart from that, yeah, I like it. It's pretty clear that the Redux version is more or less a recreation of the original one. For the most part, it does a good job, and you feel claustrophobic. I will mention, the original one does do some stuff better. The corpse is more disturbing in it, duh, but a little detail that the artist knew when making the original one was shadows and how they worked. You see, this takes place in the mine, meaning artificial light is required to light it up meaning that some places in the mine won't have light. And you guessed it, the artist knew this and added a really cool and realistic shadowy dark effect. You can see where the light stops, then starts getting darker. Little details like that add to the overall experience, and it's consistent too, because Postal Dude is in the dark. And maybe this is due to the abstract style in the Redux version, but the consistency is just not there. 
It's like they didn't care about how light works in the mine. It's not bad, it's really good, but I don't know, it just... The original one had that charm to it, you know, and yeah. And it feels like they're trying a bit too hard in this one. I don't know, I, I have mixed feelings on it, but yeah, just little details that are important, you know? Alright, this will be quick and easy. I love the sound, but what the fuck am I looking at? I get it, the original Postal one was also tough to describe, but hey, at least it was describable? The Redux version is such a mess, it actually hurts my eyes and my head when I look at it. I've read that some people see this as teeth, I don't see it as teeth, I don't know what I'm looking at, so you know what, you fiends tell me what you see. Maybe this is actually some type of masterpiece, but <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> So this is a faithful recreation of the original. I dare say the art for the Redux version is better than the original one. This does bring up the question, should the artist just recreated the other ones as well? I am aware that some people make the argument that if you prefer the original, play the original, and you shouldn't expect the same experience in the remake. It's a touchy subject. To give you my worthless opinion on it, briefly, I don't mind if they make changes in the remake of a game, just as long as it's still in the vein of the original. I hope that makes sense. There is more I want to say, but this isn't the time or place for it, fiends. Now this does a bad job of being a disjointed mess versus the junkyard in my opinion. You make out something. The original one was pretty simple, a face that was disjointed. You could still tell it was a face. The Redux version takes that to the next level, but it isn't an eyesore. You can still see some facial features, but now there's this blurish blood effect on it, and I love it. This was a face of a man, but now you can barely see it. This is good. It stays true to the original and the changes improve upon it. Yeah, they didn't change it, so they simply recreated it. I don't blame them. The sound, the art, they're both so fucking slick. Why change that? Both are great, what else can I say? This legit looks slick and cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so I love this version and I think it does a better job than the original. It took the scrolls and made them more mature and more realistic looking. And it feels disturbing and horrifying. 
So yeah, good job. Thumbs up for Marcy. Not much to be said here, it captures the original. I don't know if you can really approve upon it, or if you should change it, but hey, if it's not broken, why fix it? You know how I said the original one was my favourite? The art, the sound of pure horror, something that you don't really hear in horror games? I love it a lot, I think the sound is relaxing, yeah, you know, it's a good, it's a good piece, I loved it. Yeah, I really hate the Redux version. Is it high quality? Yes. Does the art look good? Yes. My issue? The sound. Like what the fuck did you do? It sounds so underwhelming. I guess it has some pure horror vibe to it, but what made the sea so impactful, so disturbing, so powerful, was a consistent screaming that seems to never end. It's disturbing, uncomfortable, that rawness to it. It's unique. Yes, it is. I don't care if you say it was just screaming. It's unique. You don't hear this in horror games anymore. Because they're all sissies, and they're cowards, and they're uncreative pieces of shit. So yeah, the Redux version is just so underwhelming. It's not bad, but compare it to the original one, it's so bad. It just loses it for me. I, I can't relax to this. Yeah, I've got nothing else to say about this that I haven't said before. It's just good. I just wanted a reason to play it again. Sorry.
You fiends remember at the start of this section where I said one of the Redux levels is so amazing and that alone is worth buying Redux? This is the one. Not only does it improve upon the art, but the sound. It's really beautiful. This, in my opinion, is the best loading screen art and sound. I mean that. It's better than the original ones and the Redux ones. I said that in the original one, it was depressing, hearing the piano notes being overshadowed by the demonic laughter. For me, it really fits with the idea that Postal Dude had some humanity left, and the demon is choking it out of him. For me, it made me feel really sorry for Postal Dude. It really goes with my victim theory. Redux takes it to another level, to another league, and it's just... Wow. It's more depressing, and it's more beautiful. They changed the piano keys slightly, so instead of it just looping, you can hear a Ron high key note, followed by a demonic laughter. It beats you over the head of Postal Dude getting his humanity choked out of him by the demon. The art is also just sad. Instead of a decaying effect the original had, they focus more of Postal Dude being less human. Well, I see this as Postal Dude. It's a humanoid figure, but the skin looks off. It's more alien-like now. Being a little personal here, the Redux Central Park theme is now one of my depression songs I listen to. When I feel really sad and I don't want to leave my bed, I sometimes listen to this and it's relaxing and beautiful. One time I spend an hour, maybe two, just listening to this and it's emotionally draining. I cried a lot and embracing this was just an experience. I didn't regret it. I may have some issues with Redux, but I will defend it because of this piece. Volume of Scissors are legends and posted this on YouTube on their official channel. If you really don't want to play the game, at the very least, for me, please give Central Park a listen. It's amazing. Oh, and I found out that the community thinks that Central Park theme reminds them of Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Now you know me. I love Silent Hill 1 to 4, but I never played Shattered Memories, so if you've played that game, please listen to this and tell me if you agree. I love this one. Not only is it faithful to the original, but the slight changes actually make it more disturbing. This is horrifying, and hell, I think it's better than the original one. I love it. So, at first, I kind of hated this one. In the original one, I said it was really important because it was the only time we saw Postal Dude as himself. No demonic filters, it was a different perspective, and it was really cool. In the Redux version, it really doesn't fit the art style. It's like a 180. It's like watching an anime, but then suddenly a Source Filmmaker character pops up. That's how I would describe it. However, my opinion has changed, and the Redux version is really, really clever. Why? All this time, the imagery, the demonic art, the horror we witness, yet in reality, Postal Dude is just a human being. Of course when we see him from a perspective that isn't his, of course there won't be any demonic imagery. This is a realism take. This is a perspective of someone else looking at him. The loading screen art is, well, art, but this is like a picture of a real life person. Of course it would not look like nothing we've seen. 
This is really smart. I fucking love it. I love the glass effect. I really love that they changed Poster Dude's expression. He's smiling here. Yeah, they did change it from the original, but it still goes hand on hand with the entries and the war journals. He's about to end his mission. Either finishing his bloodlust killing spree, or saving his country. This is a proud moment for Postal Dude. That's my take on it anyway, but yeah, I think it's fucking genius. Pretty much no change to the original apart from hiding the school building a bit more, like making it more blurred. Of course the elementary school ending was removed, it made sense to change it. Interestingly though they kept the same entry. Oh my god, this is so dope. I love it. You can still see the original art within it, but the new effects and the splashes of colour. You truly feel like you're inside an insane person's mind. Plus the heartbeat and the screaming just add so much stress. I love it. It's excellent. When it comes to the art, it's a fairly faithful recreation of the original. What makes it really good is the new sound. It feels so demonic and twisted. You can hear these demonic moans. I love it. So, it's alright. The new art is fine, the sound is fine. It's fine. It's solid. I don't know what else to say. I suppose the demonic speech you can hear is maybe a demon talking? Influencing Postal Dude? If you fiends have your own thoughts on this one, please share.
I guess they made it more of an eye? I guess that's cool, but the elementary school, or the end, did this so much better. I love this one so much. Not only is the fire effect so good, but the best part about it is the new face design. It really goes hand in hand with my victim theory. One side is more demonic, smiling, twisted, which represents the demon, but the other side is human, crying in blood, with a sad expression as if he doesn't take joy in killing. He's suffering, and he feels despair. I love that a lot. It's a great symbolism of what Postal Dude is. He isn't a clear-cut character. There's so much layer and complexity to him. Great art. It's okay. That's it. I guess the sword is pretty cool. Even though the original one wasn't that good, it's okay. Being nice, I, I guess I do like the effect. Shrugs. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, they're both great. I was worried that they were going to change it with the new art style, and I'm glad they didn't. The outro and the credits purpose was meant to make you feel uncomfortable, and it does its job. It must be said, one of the changes to the art is that the baby's corpse that was visible in the original has been removed. So I'm not against this removal. In the original, Postal Dude refuses to kill children, so seeing the baby in the pile of bodies makes no sense and it defeats that moment. But the ending was only shown in the original. In the Redux version, you got a whole new ending. It would make more sense if they updated the original than the Redux version. It's just weird that they removed it now. 
It's a good chain, better 19 years late than never, I guess. And that's it. Some of them were great, one of them was masterful, and the others I felt were really underwhelming. Listen, fiends, I get it. Not the same game, don't expect the same experience. I do appreciate that Running With Scissors wanted to try something new. I simply wish that the core horror from the original game was still in Redux. In addition, Central Park is proof that you can still approve upon the original and take it further. Let's be clear, Redux is not bad. The art is great, top quality. But for me, it loses that 90s edge, you know? But yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. In addition, you can listen and view the Redux levels for free on the playlist made by Ranrithsers on their YouTube channel. For some reason though, some of the stages isn't there, like the farm, the complex, etc. I don't know why. I even bought the album, and they're not here. I'm not complaining. Wait, I take that back, I am complaining. Why? I need answers. Whee! With Redux, they included new modes. I think my Scissors did something really cool with them, even though I do have my issues with them, but let's go through them one by one. By far, the best mode they added is Rampage mode. To put it simply, go through each level trying to get the highest score you can. Thanks to the slick music that's being played, it gets you pumped up. Like, oh, you went through a trip of horror, depression, and insanity, and it all made you feel really, really uncomfortable? Uneasy? Well then, time to dance! And if I may say so, oh my fucking god, it's so fucking hard to get A plus on these levels! There's so much depth to the score system. In a nutshell, you pretty much have to kill everyone in a long ass combo, and that doesn't even guarantee you an A plus grade! In addition, you get new level entries and a new ending. I really love the ending, it has that Postal 1 vibe to it. It's called The Beginning. Let's watch it. Also, I had to subtitle it because it could be difficult to hear what is being said. After overseeing the subject for some time, the battery assessment enters its closing stages. The subject's are in the midst of care has refused to cooperate with the ongoing evaluation. While the subject remains lost with a response after outside stimuli, caretakers have reported brief moments of coherency. During these increasingly sporadic times of vicinity, he describes himself as a broken and self-proclaimed everlasting crusade, some sort of unending rampage. It is uncertain exactly who he is competing against, but it seems he desires the judgment of some unknown figure. Communication with this unseen voice suggests an inability to distinguish between his delusions and reality. Observation shows him withdrawing further and further to himself. Prognosis is unclear at this point as, despite our continued efforts, the subject's condition seems to only deteriorate with time. He appears to be trapped inside his own mind in an endless struggle against himself. Trying to make sense of the ending, some people, even myself included, theorize that this is what's happening inside of Postal Dude's mind in the mental asylum. After all of the killings in the campaign, and Postal Dude ending up in the mental asylum, in his head he's trying to recreate those moments, but make them more efficient. Since throughout Rampage mode, there's a constant reminder of being judged and outperforming others, but those others? It's just him. He's judging himself to do better and better. Why does he think like this? We will never know. Now, saying all that, I do believe this mode does harm the overall experience of the game. It's not a bad mode. It's actually amazing. But it kind of loses that edge, that horror that Postal was about. Yes, it is a separate mode, but it still does affect the experience in my opinion. Take Silent Hill 2 and, for the sake of it, Let's add a Rampage mode in it. Intense rock music from Akira. It's just James killing as many monsters as he can, and mini pyramid head bosses pop up from now and again. Yeah, you can say it's a separate mode, but it does affect the experience it has. And Silent Hill 2 is also a really, really mature and serious game, and depressing as well. And if it had such a mode, 
Honestly, it's like a fuck you to the campaign. Yes, yes, they're both two different games and Rampage mode isn't that bad, but still, it that's how I feel. It just, that horror, that feeling of being uncomfortable, uneasy, it just goes away in seconds. And it doesn't help they reuse the loading screen art and the soundtrack used for them for Rampage mode. Like, it feels so out of place, it feels off-putting. I'm beating on that mode too hard. But just to give it some praise, the soundtrack for the Rampage mode does have hidden ambient sounds within it, and that's amazing. I, I wish more music did that. And if you are curious to listen to the Rampage mode soundtrack, it's free on YouTube. Bunny of Scissors posted it themselves, so yeah, listen to it. Uh, tell me how you feel about it. Because it's good music. I like the music. It's just the mode is just uh, the experience, you know? <laughs> Next, there is a co op mode. You play with friends, bots, or by yourself? Anyway, it also has unique level entries and its own ending. Here is the co-op ending. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess to a level this is disturbing in a meta sense? Unfortunately, when horrific actions happen in real life, it can inspire others to do such horrible actions too. I guess Poster Dude got banned. They broke him out. It's really weird because they all look like Poster Dude. Maybe they're really, really obsessed with him. Plus, there's a deathmatch mode. I think it's so pointless, I'm not even going to talk about it. I want to emphasize again, Redux is a great game and a well done remake. I still believe you should buy it if you enjoyed the experience from Postal 1, since that game is free on Steam. Support running with scissors. But unfortunately, Redux loses its edge and becomes a power fantasy. It's a shame because the original Postal did its best not to be one. Rampage mode is a great mode, but it pumps you up, fills you up with adrenaline, the horror, the depression, the insanity, and all of those feelings of being uncomfortable. It's flushed away in seconds. Instead, it's like, I'm gonna get those high scores. The music makes me feel powerful and I can take on the world. Stop running away from me. Death is my master. All must die. Yeah, it's a good mode. A great one. But the experience of horror is more impactful in Postal 1. And you kind of take that away with this mode. And it's just a shame. The gameplay feels better in Redux. Yes, on paper, that's a good thing. But Postal 1 was about feeling better with smooth controls. It did everything it can to make you feel like shit. Maybe this was because of the limitations back then. Regardless, it felt purposeful. It felt like Running With Scissors wanted you to feel like shit. But overall, it loses that edge that the original Postal had. Maybe that's due to time. Maybe back then in 1997, we weren't used to this sort of stuff. It really did feel edgy. But now, we're used to more darker stuff. What I'm trying to say is, Postal 1 feels like a demonic monster. Filthy and dirty and wild. The second you booted up the game, you felt that. You knew your experience was going to be a unique one. But Redux, it's like a dog with a leash on it. Clean, and it does its job. I don't know if that made sense. I hope I did. <laughs> like, let's say you, you took both of these for a walk. The demonic monsters go make it a struggle. It's going to be an uphill battle. But you know what? The experience is just, whoa. The dog, it's like, eh, it's a breeze, you know, it's not that bad, it's still good, but you know, it's nothing compared to the demonic monster. Wow, I don't know why I used that as a comparison. <laughs> yes, better can be good, and most of the time it is good, but sometimes more, better, it's actually less. It takes away from the experience. But, I know, I know, I sound I'm beating down on Redux, but regardless, it really makes me happy that it doesn't stain that bad because Postal 1 is still on Steam. I would be more upset if it wasn't on Steam. But hey, I'm grateful Running With Scissors re-released it and made it free. 
a lot of games, especially in the PS2 era, don't get re-released for digital platforms, and unfortunately that's mostly due to devs not caring. I appreciate when you is making Postal 1 available, that's awesome. And with that being said, I still recommend Redux. It's just Postal 1's experience and what it offers is just amazing and much more superior. And Redux compared to it is just underwhelming, you know? Standalone Redux is amazing. Compare it to Postal 1, and it's kind of eh. I love Postal 1, and even though I had some issues with Redux, it's still a great game. I would love to hear your thoughts on what the game means to you. How do you feel about Postal Dude? And if you have an interest in horror, I hope you play the game, because you will definitely have a great time. But yeah, a series that is known for offensive comedy and great free roaming started off as a horror game. A very dark, twisted one that is filled with depression, insanity, and the unknown. Postal 1 is unique. Creative. Beautiful. It's a horror game that stands on its own. It makes you the monster. Something about that makes it even more scarier. The fact that there's realism to it just makes it more uncomfortable. Honestly, Postal 1 is one of the best horror games ever. I would even say it's more scarier than modern horror games. Do I even dare say it's better than classic horror games? Sure. You have your classic Resident Evil games, Silent Hills, Echo Knight, so on, so on, blah blah blah. Yeah, they're good. Fantastic, even. But it's the ones like Rule Rose. Postal has that realism to it that just makes it horrifying. I don't know, it's not easy to describe. I hope I made sense. I also want to mention that Postal 1 was so influential that fans made their own loading screen art and their own soundtracks with them. And it's really cool. It's amazing how something full of horror and disturbing imagery can inspire others to make cool art. And you know, I think that's dope. So yeah, the overall message of my video, the conclusion, my final point, is that Running with Scissors needs to make more horror games. Fucking make more horror games, you wussies. Make horror games and take my money, you fucking communists. See ya. Oh yeah, you could suicide in Postal. I don't know why I'm mentioning this now, at the end of the video. Yeah. I regret nothing. I regret nothing.